viewers, I'm Leaded Logic, and welcome to the first ever HD episode of Gamer Logic. Today's show is actually brought to you by uh, Randy again from Minnesota. Uh, my buddy Randy sent me these a uh, couple months back, and I've been kind of playing through them to uh, check them out. And uh, they're interesting little bootleg consoles, and that is these right here. Uh, the first one is the Power Joy, and the second one is the Versus Max Max Play. And these uh, two little guys are basically bootleg games built into the controllers, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, you may have seen these yourselves. Um, if you've walked around any mall, usually the little mall stands have them. Uh, in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s, Power Joy was probably the biggest deal. They always had a Power Joy stand. Um, and there were just tons of people playing like Super Mario and Contra. And back then, the patent for Nintendo, uh, original Nintendo games, had not expired. Uh, so it was pretty much illegal for them to be putting these things out. Uh, so Nintendo did a cease and desist. They kind of vanished, kind of didn't, uh, and a lot of them ended up in resale shops. And uh, I'm sure if you go to any resale shop, chances are you'll find one of these. Um, so to pretty much describe to you how this thing works, it runs off batteries. Uh, I think you can also hack it to run off AC power as well, but uh, it uh, has your standard, at least the PowerDroy has a mono plug-in for audio and a regular composite yellow plug-in, and uh, it's got its little reset switch and power on on the actual base of the controller, and pretty much you load it in and it starts up. It's even got a little zapper here, a zapper here on the front, which unfortunately I was never able to test because uh, I was testing it on a LCD TV, as you'll see from uh, further in the review here. But uh, it also has a little add-in to play Famicom games and unlicensed NES games, supposedly. Um, both of these actually are supposed to be able to do that, and I was never able to get either one of them working. Uh, to actually play any of the Famicom stuff, so maybe I'm missing something, maybe there's something else you need to do, but I couldn't get it working. So that's pretty much it from that perspective. But uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the Power Joy. Uh, this is probably going to be a two part episode, so um, just be aware of that when you're wondering when the uh, Max uh, joystick will be coming into play. But we're going to go ahead and pop the Power Joy in first and take a look at a couple games there, maybe like three or four games, and uh, we'll be right back. Alright, well, we're going to start up the uh, Power Joy here and let's play some games. What a beautiful intro screen. Uh, so, we're going to try Panzer Fly Car, uh, which in itself is a very interesting title name. We're going to start it up with level 1 here. Course 1. Now, <laughs> Playing this, it's like a racing game. You get fuel. I can't help to see uh, picture that these pixels and everything um, look like they were ripped from. Oh, there I go. Uh, from Metroid. Uh, they look like just the pieces of level were rip, ripped from the game. But anyway, you're trying to uh, avoid these cars while keeping your gas and getting to the finish line here. And as you can see, I'm doing pretty terrible. Uh, if you hit into certain cars, you wipe out. Certain ones move on like a stationary track and others will actually actively hunt for you. But I mean it is pl pretty classic retro stuff that you'd expect from a Nintendo game and I, I don't know if this is an actual bootleg or if they ripped the pixels from something else which a lot of these that's all they did. So I'm driving around now I'm starting to pick it up. Unfortunately I'm almost out of fuel here so I'm going to get a game over and as you see that red car just actively took me out here. Game over. We're going to try this again now that i got a little use of the controls and start it up. I've only played the first level. Alright, here we go. It takes forever to start up. I like how the other ones just take off, no problem. So, let's fly here. Um, control isn't too bad. You can actually use both the joystick and the D-pad. Sometimes for certain games, the Power Joy isn't very responsive with the pad. So you'll find, ooh, almost wiped out there. So you'll find that uh, 
you run into issues trying to move in certain directions and oh hit the wall. So as you can see I'm starting to get used to this thing though. So let's take off here. With the green. Oh, red got me. Yeah, the red just comes out of nowhere and stops. And what's funny, when you start, you don't see the green or the red, so it's like, where the hell did they come from? If this was a race, why are those guys so far ahead of you? Ah. So overall, it's uh, an interesting little game. It's not too bad. Uh, at times the play control gets really annoying. Especially that with the fuel. Aren't you glad that your car doesn't do that when it runs out of fuel? So it's game over. We're going to switch to a different game here. Uh, what are we going to do? Uh, let's go with uh, Future Tank. And Future Tank is interesting. It's like a cross between Galaga, Space Invaders, and Pac-Man. And again, I don't know if this is another one that has uh, pixels ripped from it, or if it was an actual original game, or uh, just a homebrew development. I'll pause it here. So basically the goal is your little Space Invader guy on the bottom here. You're supposed to protect that and take out these flying eye things. Um, I never really discovered if there's actually a way to beat the level. Because I haven't lasted long enough. And this game is very, very frustrating with the D-pad. Um, your character won't always want to go in the direction it needs to. And you often get stuck in the walls here, which is a real piss off. So, basically your little invader dude on the bottom there, or base, or whatever the heck you want to call it, has a certain amount of walls behind it. And you're basically just flying around taking stuff out. Now you can grab power-ups and stuff, like as you can see here. Some are just for score. One will actually clear the screen, but the stuff just keeps coming back, man. Overall, not bad, but uh, play control with the D-pad kind of makes this game a little annoying. And uh, if anyone happens to see a game I'm playing here and knows it's from another system or knows if it's a pixel swap, let me know, because I'd be interested to oh, play the original titles that goes my uh, head of operations, whatever you want to say. Okay, let's go to another game here. Space War. Okay. This, I swear, I've played on another system. And this one's actually kind of fun. You got a limited amount of bullets, and uh, the bullets keep coming back up as you kill enemies. And I like kind of like the uh, parallax scrolling. I don't know if it's actually parallax scrolling or not, but the scrolling on the bottom is pretty interesting for a game that was probably lifted off another game. It was pretty high tech at the time, I imagine. Um, play control isn't too bad, but again, the D pad gets in the way, and the gravity of this game sometimes pulls you in, and it's really hard to pull yourself back up. So again, uh, the Power Joys D-pad is a little lacking in certain degrees. Alright, let's do another round of this one. Alright. So this is kind of like three games, but I wanted to show you off the Power Joy. Um, I think Randy said he found this for about a buck ninety nine or ninety nine cents, which isn't bad if you're into collecting like obscure video game retro video games. This is a cool thing to pick up, but it, it would kind of get old quickly. It's just nice to have in the collection. So if I had to rate this out of uh, five stars, uh, with the selection of games and the D-pad, I'd probably give it like a a two out of five. Uh, there's only really th oh, I totally thought that was a legitimate uh, power. Um, out of everything, I'd probably only give it a 2 out of 5, just because the D-pad kind of sucks, and we've got a limited amount of games out of 3, so, um, overall, 2 out of 5 on the Power Joy. Uh, we're going to go ahead and load up the Part 2 of this, so please go to Part 2 of the video, and we're going to check out the Versus Max console and see if there's many differences between that, so, hopefully you enjoyed uh, your little intro to the Power Joy.